down in the notes section, it's, it's got kind of an explanation of what we had done to it. So, And that's, uh, other than, uh, I just wanted to touch base with you again, kind of give you, uh, whenever we do make an out-of-town transfer for some of you uh, in the outlying areas, we, we made it. Actually, Nick made it uh, an emergency transfer as a patient from Pawnee, Pawnee, Pawnee Valley, Pawnee Valley uh, Hospital. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to visit with the, the directors over there, kind of to, just to get a feel for what's going on with their services. Uh, I'm not sure why they. I'm told that they that they have uh, bowed out of the out of town transfer business that they are using Life Team to do the majority of theirs. So I'm not sure why that is. If, if they're having troubles with, with staffing or what the, what the situation is. Uh, the only thing I ask them when they call is, uh, do they have insurance? Um, if it's a patient that they can transport in another manner, whether even, even if it uh, comes down the fly or not, uh, uh, I'm going to probably stick to that pretty hard and heavy, and unless it's a patient that, uh, that uh, is just in such dire condition that that their life depends on us stepping forward. Uh, uh, but, but if it's a stable patient, I'm, I'm not going to run it for them if, if they don't have insurance. You're talking about out of town? Yeah, out of our town. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it also depends upon, of course, our staffing. Mm -hmm. they're not put us, uh, if we have uh, staffing levels that uh, afford us a, you know, an expert, or an expert unit, then we'll take it. But I would add that, uh, that there's always a chance that we could we could get hit by multiple numbers, but that's not very likely. So that is all we have as the to uh, be present for an end. Thank you. She's here. She's here. Oh, she is? Yeah. Let's <laughs> recess and go upstairs. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Recess. Make your, your chairman designation and vice chairman. I would nominate Clayton to be chairman. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. So, so now we need a vice chairman. Nominate Kurt. Kurt Child, vice chair. I'll second that motion. And all in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> That's what you call a railroad. That'd be the first two on those for a while. There's a county government day in Topeka on January 24th. At FKAC, they encouraged everyone to attend that. And I was wondering what. Oops. Um, now, do you guys go to <coughs> new commissioner training? I am. Correct. I, yeah, I can. I've got other commitments of three, all three of those days, or two of both of those days. And when is that? Tuesday. Well, Wednesday and Thursday. Now, this week. week. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, they were talking about requiring registration by the 21st, or, and we can decide on that next week. Well, it's, um, you get together with all the legislators. <laughs> I'll probably do that on Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, then I noticed that the Southwest chapter of the Chamber of Commerce is hosting a, a thing at the, at the hotel in, in Topeka. But that's on their own, and it's not that same day. It's something that they would notification from Richard Beckman in uh, Barton County about the Byway Committee meeting on the 22nd of January. I'm probably not on this list yet. Well, oh, I was on the previous one. Oh, yeah.
You want to? Jason, do you have some? I do have a step increase for a long time. You are doing before. I can do it after. Come on in. Expenses 
308555 which is down about $800 from the prior month. And that's with a net income of negative 73973 for year to date, or for the month, but $205,365 for year to date, which is still a million sixteen thousand two hundred five dollars than the prior year. Why do your guys' salaries and wages <coughs> differ so much on a monthly basis? I mean, there's several months in the past. Where, I mean, I've been looking back since April of 2012. There's months that you guys will have seventy to sixty thousand dollar salary differences in each month. What is that? Some of that was the salaries payable accrual wasn't getting done correct, and okay. I believe it in October or. There was one month not too long ago that it didn't, it got done, but it got reversed in the same month, so it didn't show up. Because, I mean, even from prior month to this month, there are 40 some <coughs> thousand difference just in the salaries. <coughs> Almost fifty thousand, no, forty six thousand difference, and just in one month difference. And I mean, there's you can go back several months, and there's huge difference. I mean, huge swings, and seventy, eighty thousand dollars. The accrual wasn't getting done correctly, or it wasn't getting done at all there for a while. Something you can go back and look at, though. <laughs> it's a good so it's been correct. <laughs> I mean, so we'll start seeing more steady, steady numbers. I mean, I've been going through some of your numbers the last yeah. month. That's, I mean, it's, I'm sitting here trying to remember one what you told me and two why they could possibly be that way. That's one of them I couldn't come up with. <laughs> and the other one was you guys switched in August, well, in September, from professional fees. To contract labor, I believe. We just switched the title. For what reason? Because it's primarily contract labor, so the title of professional fees was confusing some people. Okay. So kind of all falls into the same bucket. <clears throat> Why would under salaries and wages they went down this month, but get employee benefits went up a hundred thousand, right below salaries and wages? They went down. Actually, okay, that's what you mentioned. Okay, what was it? That year, four months before. It was thirty-four thousand in October, and it was twenty-one thousand in November. Okay. Do you see those salaries and wages maintaining at the hundred twenty thousand mark, or do you see them clear up at the hundred sixty-eight thousand like they were in the previous month? When they level out. That's a good question. I mean, because we <laughs> the range is from seventy seven thousand three mm -hmm. three forty nine to one hundred sixty eight thousand two forty five. I think it should be in like the one thirty range. Mm -hmm. Okay. Monthly. What is your interest expense? I mean, you guys have notes. Mm. Those are your capital leases. Yeah, the leases, leases are paying interest on. CT scanner okay. and monitoring equipment. So that's equipment leases. Mm -hmm. Interest on those notes. Mm -hmm. Or note that equipment. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. In the back up to your balance sheet. The land and the buildings isn't, <clears throat> I mean, you show a value of these on, on your balance sheet. Isn't that county property? There's a rule in, for Medicare that says if the, if the asset is the primary use of the hospital, then it can be shown in two places. So it may be shown on your guys' books, but it's shown on their books because it is an asset of the hospital. It's for their use only. And so you need that on the balance sheet for Medicare. 
And I don't know what happened from district to county transition. I don't know if it was put on your books. I have no. I, mean, I wouldn't hear. I have no book. Um, but it's on there from the district books, and then was was carried over. But on like on your insurance policies, you listed like four different buildings. Mm -hmm. Does this value all four of those buildings? Yes. Including the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that's not a real estate value. That's a that's an asset value for insurance, or it's not a replacement value. I mean, it's whatever the original value of the of the asset was, less the accumulated depreciation is is what that is. And that's a it's not a replacement value. You couldn't build that or yeah. sell it. You know, yeah. you may sell it for way less, and it may cost you way yeah. more to replace. One hundred sixty-three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> I guess where I was looking at employee benefits is on the end, on the whole year was up a hundred thousand, and I thought we probably decreased the number of employees. Yeah. Oh, that's just from the budget, but from in two thousand eleven it was seven seven hundred eighteen thousand for the year to date. You have an actual column that doesn't so budget in the prior year. Yeah. And that's the change in the insurance. Yeah. From the state pool to the. Yeah. That common for Blue Cross to be that far out over 120 days? Or do they, I mean, is that a good debt? Or? That would be ones that we are having like issues. Other issues, but yes. likely to be collected. So private pay is a problem. I say the majority of it's over eighty, over ninety days.
The biggest deal is going to be whether they expand Medicaid in the state of Kansas. Right. Because, you know, Medicaid is paid at what cost, that's le they pay us at less than cost. And so the more you expand Medicaid, although you get some dollars instead of zero dollars from private pay, the real issue is going to be if anyone who currently pays their bills on private pay and or has insurance that pays us something, if they go to Medicaid and pay less, that'll hurt the hospital. And, and that's, a, that's a statewide thing. And that's a brown bag thing. I don't know what he's going to do. So, but Todd's right. The devil's in the details, and the details have not been written because the, the law says civilians will, civilians will, civilians will, and we don't know what she's going to say. So, currently, the critical access hospital platform is protected, which is what these guys are, and that's how the, the payment rates work. Um, and there isn't any, any talk of eliminating that program, which would kill 87 hospitals in the state of Kansas or something like that. Um, but there are some things that they're looking at, like they went from 102% of cost to 101% of cost. They've eliminated bad debt down to 67 and 37% instead of closer to 100 for, for critical access hospitals. And so those will affect cash. But Todd's right, it's, it's a wait and see trying to figure out what the rules are going to say. I am going to Topeka the 22nd um, to, to visit around the advocacy day and they're all going to speak to us and then we can ask questions later so I'm kind of excited about that. Kind of excited. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we go. We were curious, we never heard exactly how much we're getting in this year for the tax budget. <laughs> oh, you have I, I think for budget purposes, we kind of left it the same as last year, but we didn't know if it was more or what. She's looking at that. What she's doing there. Um, we have plans for doing outreach programs in the county, yeah, um, informing the population of services. We're always so trying to look for different ways to do that. Yes. Um, in fact, I mean, advertising is kind of a weird animal, and we've done certain things, and it reaches some people, and at some it doesn't. I just think we're always going to have to, to try and do that better. Um, yeah. You guys did the pink out and the cookbooks, and the pink out was I went to the different school districts. Is it, you know, for the future, since we've got two new commissioners, is this, I mean, will we bring in what you all want to see? I think so. Um, and we thought we might, when, we, when the board approves it, then we might check with Nina and see when we can get to you to put it in the packet so they can look at it beforehand. Would that be better? <coughs> Would that be great? Trying to cram it in? Yeah. And bring what you have before. Something else I'd, I mean, I would like to see is a little more input as far as the direction we think the numbers are going. I mean, it's, I mean we're not running the hospital. <laughs> we never, you know, and I don't care to. But well, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't like surprises, and I'd rather keep everything on the table, and that way everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. We won't surprise you with the numbers, right? I mean, right. that's not what we're to do. Uh, the insurance deal was kind of a surprise when we got looking through that. Mm -hmm. Did, they, did you get that corrected? Or um, what I need to ask Nina if she got. And send her some more information. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah we'll talk to her. On the director's and officer's policy, they were adding you guys as an advisory board. Mm -hmm. and so the council should be an advisory board. What new board members did you guys put the building for?
Is that the meeting first? Or do I have an expert or something like that? Yeah. Some or like the insurance. So it'll be the first of February. Mm -hmm. We'll meet with the gal and, and Greg Ben. Our insurance person. Our insurance. So we get this thing rolling after that. Um, oh, on EMS billing. Mm -hmm. Have we got any decision on that? And I'm really thinking that what we need is you know, for, for the hospital to do follow up billing. That's going to be you know, hard to do, isn't it? If, well, because we're not going to know. It's harder to do that type of stuff if you're not doing the upfront billing. I mean, okay. Obviously, we'll do what we're asked to do. Like that. Okay. Well, I know the coding comes out of the EMS office, mm -hmm. and, and the bill is, is submitted. You know, the problems we're having is, is the follow-up. We don't know what's going on, then we're going to be in the same position as the people who are calling the EMS to get answers. We're still going to have to wait on this to hear whoever to get back with us to answer the questions. Then we can call patients back. Okay. Anything else? Is the hospital full now? <laughs> um, Usually, the next three months are busy times for the hospitals mm -hmm. everywhere. So, and it's unfortunate we have to rely on sick people. We're trying to keep them well. Okay.
As you can see, Stafford County, we had total applications completed, 1,131. Um, as I've expressed before, this has grown to more than what I really was wanting it to be, so it, it is getting a little overwhelming in the office, and I am kind of at a, at a crossroads of what to do. So, um, but I just wanted to show you the numbers. I, this is for 2012 year. Um, as applications completed, um, the next column is the convenience fees that I collected doing that because the people that come, they pay a convenience to do it in our office. And then that's the next column, well, the furthest right column is the money that we collected for the state and sent to the state, $1,592,000. Who sets the, your transaction fees? Um, we all kind of got together as other counties and tried to decide what to do. So, because we want to be uniform, mm -hmm. we don't think it's good that one county would charge more than another. We feel there should be consistency. I think Smith County jumped outside the bubble. <laughs> yeah, and Haskell, did, Haskell did pretty well for I mean, six hundred. They did four hundred and fifty-six. Yeah. And, and, as, and as what like that is, you may have. It may be just one or two transactions, but it may be a fleet. Like uh, I think Haskell County, she has, um, she has. What trucking company is it? She's got a big trucking company. So you just have more of them. Yeah. So it may just be a couple transactions. National carriers, that's it. I think she has national carriers that comes in out there. Haskell, mm -hmm. no. South Wales. Yeah, Nothing convenient out there. So it's, you get a fee per transaction or a fee per customer? It, it, on transaction. Uh, well, per. Yeah. Oh, it depends what it is. Okay. And I can't. Well, I'm just trying to figure out why. You know, if, if they did seven or six hundred ninety-nine, collected eleven thousand, and we did eleven hundred thirty-one, why don't we have twenty-seven thousand right. collected? Right. Things? And a lot of that difference is, is um, you charge more for cab carts. So if you got uh, sixty you know. trucks, there's you're gonna, you may have done a application transaction, but you're also getting more money for cab carts. And if you got a fleet that comes in there with two hundred trucks, then you're gonna get a little bit more that uh, way. See. So it depends what kind okay. of transactions they are. So yeah, I've often wondered that too. <laughs> and I asked uh, Leo up at the state about that, and that's what he said. She's got those like national carriers. Uh, for example. And then they can also bring them in, and they can do them when they have time to do them. Uh, I see. Yeah, so it works out good for her too that you know, they work with her, that they come in and can do it when they have time. So, so anyway, so I wanted to show that to you guys. I just got that Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Management plan that's required by the state every year. It goes in oh, about June every year. But the, it does a really good job as a basic overview of my department. I just thought I'd bring that down for you guys to look at. You guys can read it and everything. And if you have any questions or any suggestions or anything, we be more than open to it. So. Oh, yeah. programs they are actually within the state statute and they're treating it so it's that they don't even have to let me know I mean they don't, I don't have to know any of it if they'll treat it so yeah but but the big thing that, that to keep from spreading most is the must thistle uh, that's I 
found some more this fall that we're starting to see more of it around. And it's it's good well, there's one on a county road that's embarrassing that I drove by. But I probably drove by this place a hundred times today. I noticed it. So. so we found out if you guys don't know what the list is, this guy's working down my patch. Yeah. That. Well, that's that's yeah, the other. A lot of people think that the bull thistle yeah. is the musk, and it's. I mean, they're they're so closely related, but one is the noxious weed, and one is not. So, yeah. but yeah, I just wanted to get you guys some information. If you have any questions or suggestions or anything? We having a good first day. Yeah, any problems or pythons? The pythons? No. I wouldn't have a problem with Python, I'd just call me a heart attack and die. <laughs> and there would be no problem. <laughs> but, oh, and also, my truck is down in Wichita for probably about a month. They're going through my sprayer and everything. So, so getting calls from somebody saying, well, he's not doing anything. Well, you've got a backpack. I do have a backpack. <laughs> and you got the ATV. <laughs> that's I do. Okay, that's nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> me the opportunity to like if I go out for bids for CDs and stuff, I, I bid put out bids to all the banks, which <laughs> what is really two. Yeah. So we just always list all the bids. Or I guess three. 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 Yeah. three. three them off the list. Yeah. I'm serious about that. Pardon, what did you say, Shane? Taking the top one off the list completely. <laughs> if you're going to take the top one, you, you should take the one where Max is. Well, yeah, you got to take the vote. Exactly yeah. my point. That's fine with me. That's, I mean, she deals with the banks more than I do. Well, okay. I've always tried to keep money, um, half, with my two banks here in town, I've always tried to keep the county money half and half. I always tried to keep it fair. So that's what I've always done in the past. Now, if we're not going to, if we're going to change the banks we're going to use, um, maybe we better hold off on this resolution because we're going to have to close checking accounts major, major and take. Hey, yeah, change distribution accounts and payroll accounts. And so then that would involve maybe we need to go out for for bids on pay, payroll. And, and Who does that now? Or what What bank do you use the most now? That one? We use both. We use both. That, that's what I say. I've always tried to keep it fair and tried to keep it half and half. And then the outside banks. Um, you know, I didn't ever think it would be cost effective for me to be driving to um, Stafford every day to do deposits. So 
that's why I never use for regular day day to day operations. But now I have used the outside banks for CDs. So um, whoever has the highest interest rate on a bid is who I go with because that's going to make the county more money. So and I currently have a couple CDs in Stafford. But um, I would think you could just keep the three little, oh, there's only three banks in. It's just basically keep, three right. now. So, but if, if that's if that's your wish, like I said, can, can we? We're going to have to, because that's going to be a huge. Yeah, because well, we'll have to have time to change bank accounts and things like that. So, whatever you guys <coughs> But we could just use American State in St. John, St. John National, St. John, and Farmers in Stafford, right? Because you're not going to take anything to Hudson that you wouldn't get the same rate for here in St. John. And even though, um, even though I could technically go over there and make a deposit, they don't have to be on here anyway because they're the same institution. Yeah, right? I mean, they're all the same. In the same past, it was just kind of a community thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, but it's beyond that. It, exactly. <laughs> you're, right, you're absolutely right. Okay, so I will take off. So you, you want to table this for now? or? Oh, I can redo it right here. Take off <coughs> the Maxfields and the Hudson Banks. They're all three represented right there. Yeah. And leave the Farmers Bank and Stafford on. Yeah. Yeah. Can we go ahead and make the motion? Yeah, I'll just get a big, big copy in there. Yeah, I guess. It should be on my printer there. On the desk.
2013-3 is the official county newspaper, and there's two bids. I would like to just add that I have had trouble getting my proof of publications from, from our current paper. It's been an ongoing problem. So that's the biggest problem with it. Is trying to get those darn things. If you go on circulation, I think you can say news is more, I don't know. It's whatever. So I guess we need to be thinking about what our goals and objectives are for the upcoming year and uh, move forward. I think we've done pretty well the last couple of years and uh, I'd like to have it continue. So we can probably think about that and discuss it the next time we have a meeting. We will not meet on the 21st because of Martin Luther King Day. Do we going to skip that week? No. I need you to leave. Well, the, 20, the morning of the 22nd is the filing deadline for the city school election. And that's when everybody will wait to come in and file. <coughs> so can you meet like Wednesday? It's a few Sure. I can do that. Wednesday the 23rd. I mean, it's just. Um, I mean, or I could probably have somebody else in here doing minutes too. 
but I just know in past experience people will be flocking in that way. I'm sure. So, uh, okay, so you want to meet on the 23rd? If you could, that'd be great. It's the 22nd, 24th, so, okay, the 23rd it is, 8.30, I guess, there's nothing else, there's, we just want to hear it, nothing? You guys have anything? Huh? No. no. We're adjourned.